Well, welcome back. We're talking about the trends in news and technology we might see in 2015 and beyond. Joining me now from California is Shramana Mitra, a Silicon Valley entrepreneur and tech blogger. And from Miami, Jason Silva is a futurist and creator of Shots of Awe, a short film series highlighting innovation, technology, and futurism. Thanks to both of you for joining the conversation. Shimona, let's look at Thank the you. big picture here, the broad picture. What will be the biggest breakthroughs, in your view, in tech in 2015? Will it be in space or medical science or wearable computers or even innovations in the workplace? Well, you know, the one space that I'm watching very closely is artificial intelligence, and it cuts across a variety of different uh, fields. It goes from robotics to medicine to, uh, you know, legal, to all kinds of fields. And it's just a very, very, very powerful technology that is starting to come of age right now. And it's going to automate huge, huge numbers of professions in, in a very large scale. So the process has already started in 2015. I expect to see a lot more happening there, and, and you will hear a lot more about this. And some of the, you know, big brains in our industry, like uh, Elon Musk uh, and also Stephen Hawking, have started sounding off warning signals as to the hmm. immense power of AI that could actually result in some destructive forces as well. The destructive forces we will not see in 2015. That's probably more in the 30, 50 year horizon, but uh, the field is going to mature tremendously in 2015. Jason, what do you believe will be the major science and tech challenges in uh, 2015? Where will scientists and tech innovators be devoting their attention to? Well, look, I think that what we're going to see is a sort of continuation of this controversy as we sort of grapple with the exponential nature of technological change. I mean, with AI, we're already seeing alarm bells ringing because people are terrified about this idea that we're literally creating non-biological intelligence that is frequently better than we are at doing all these different tasks. Kevin Kelly wrote this amazing article in Wired magazine that he says, what we're doing with AI is essentially we're going to grab everyday objects and we're going to cognitize them. Just the same way as when electricity sort of came online, we electrified everyday objects. Now we're cognitizing everyday objects. So we're impregnating everyday things with more and more intelligence. We're giving everyday things the ability to give us feedback. And, you know, when it really gets crazy, and I talk about this in Shots of Awe, but there's a great book by Andy Clark called Natural Born Cyborgs, where he says that we need to stop thinking of these tools as just tools and start thinking of them as extensions of our cognitive arsenal. You know, there is no AI versus organic intelligence. All of it is intelligence. It doesn't matter what substrate it resides in. What we're doing is we're just basically extending our minds out into the world. And eventually, the sort of distinction between self and world is going to sort of crumble. It's the whole world is going to have a kind of a tapestry of intelligence. That's, that's what we do with technology. We sort of take the mind, we impregnate the world with mind. Now, I know I'm kind of running off a little bit more into the future, but um, this is kind of what I explore in Shots of Awe. And people are scared because it's so disruptive. It's, it's kind of having the rug pulled from underneath our feet, but that's because most people don't think exponentially. Right. And technology does evolve exponentially, but we can get into that. Okay, Shramana, let's talk about something that's already scaring people, and that we saw in 2014. We saw the extent of the state's intrusion into people's private lives with the revelations made by Edward Snowden. Are we going to see a lot more of that as this technology gets more and more advanced? Well, I think the threat of cybersecurity is huge. And um, that, is, that threat is going to become uh, more and more pervasive, more and more significant. States will have to devise ways to counter that. So there's no question that cybersecurity is an area where uh, we are going to see you know, innovations. We're going to see b from both sides. We're going to see interventions from the state side. We're going to also see tremendous amount of entrepreneurship. You know, my world is the world of entrepreneurs. I run One Million by One Million, which is the first and only global virtual incubator accelerator in the world with the mission of helping a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. So we work with entrepreneurs all around the world and cybersecurity is going to continue to be an area where the entrepreneurial real energy is going to continue to be very active and needs to be very active because God knows what the hell people are cooking, that all this needs to be countered. 
Jason, let's look at some of the good uses uh, of technology. I want to play you a video of an innovation in medical science, medical tech. Let's take a look. What is your emergency? It's my dad. I think he had a heart attack. Please help. He's not breathing anymore. The ambulance drone is on its way. I'm outside. I'll be talking through the drone now, so you can put down the phone. Now please pick up the drone and bring it to your father. You're doing great. Pull the green lid. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good. I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna, please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. And there we see something which would have been in the realm of science fiction just a few years ago. We see uh, a drone ambulance. I mean, how realistic is this idea that it can Well, I just love this notion. Take off? Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, look, technology is, it, it, in the end, is our capacity to sort of hallucinate new possibilities and then literalize those possibilities into existence, you know, with the power of our tools. Ray Kurzweil, who's the head of engineering at Google, has this wonderful line. He says that since early hominids in the savannas of Africa have been, you know, picking up sticks 100,000 years ago to reach a fruit on a really high tree, we've been using sticks, tools, to extend our reach. And when you look at a video like what you just showed, you know, here's a drone ambulance. I mean, we're literally extending our neocortex the same way that the Hubble Space Telescopes allows us, you know, allows us, the, the Hubble Space Telescope allows us to, to mainline space and time through the optic nerve, extending humanity's optic nerve into space. Or the same way we send probes into, you know, on, the, on exploring Mars, the Mars rover, extending our brain to the surface of Mars. This is literally what we're seeing. I mean, the drone ambulance, this is just extending our capacity to survey, to assist, extending our reach. This is what we do. Now, when people consider what will become possible as these technologies become ever more, more powerful is that people need to start thinking about the nature of exponential change. And I'll paraphrase Kurzweil again because he's one of my heroes. But he basically says the difference between linear change, which is how we intuitively think about change, and exponential change, which is how technology actually evolves, is in the following example. 30 linear steps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. By 30, you get to 30. 30 steps later, you're at 30. That's linear change. Take the same amount of steps exponentially, which is how technology evolves. You would go 2, 4, 8, 16. By step 30, you'd be at a billion. So 30 linear steps gets you to 30. 30 exponential steps gets you to a billion. That's the reason why the smartphone in your pocket today is a million times cheaper, a million times smaller, and a thousand times more powerful than what used to be a $60 million supercomputer that was half a building in size 40 years ago. So what used to be half a building now fits in your pocket, extending your capacities in ways that we couldn't even fathom a couple decades ago. So you show something like the drone ambulance, this is only the beginning because these exponential trends are continuing. Biology is becoming an so information I, I technology. Have a very, yeah, go ahead, Shramana. I have a very interesting um, perspective on to add to what Jason is saying. I think the medical field actually is really promising when it comes to um, exponential yeah. change. Because if you look at how doctors diagnose today, right? No doctor can possibly know all medical research that has happened in the last 20, 30 years, process all the different side effects of all the drugs and medicines and so forth, take all the treatment possibilities, all the diagnostic, uh, you know, the imaging and so forth that's available, and come up with a, an accurate diagnosis to the extent that a computer can. So if you apply our earlier discussion about artificial intelligence to the field of right. medicine, you right. get much, much more capable doctors, and that can be at scale, right? You, every rural area that doesn't today have experts, real medical doctors who can operate at that kind of capacity or that kind of expertise level, you put software in there and, and you get tremendously you know, world-class, brilliant medical science accessible to anybody and everybody all around the world. This is one of the most exciting uh possibilities of AI. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, the world is going to change in ways that we cannot even fathom. IBM's Watson computer, which beat all the champions at Jeopardy, is already being used. That AI is already being used to assist doctors. Yeah. But the thing about, again, exponential means that people say, OK, well, it beat Jeopardy this year, but it's going to be 50 years before that AI can diagnose you better than your doctor. No, it won't. It'll be five years or maybe even less on the back of these exponential trends. Things like gene sequencing, okay, the capacity for us to sequence our genes and the price drop in that, that's going three times faster than exponential, than Moore's law. So it's actually, we're seeing faster breakthroughs in biotech, even faster than these exponential rates. Very quick, Mr. Mona, I've got to go. I've got a few seconds left. Yes, I wanted to comment on, on some serious planet scale problems that are coming as well. Water. I want to end the my comments on the note of the water, immense, immense water problem that's looming on the world. We extend life expectancy to huge numbers, and, and the planet has, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten billion people, and there's no water to service all these people. This is an unsustainable situation. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Shramana Mitra, Jason Silva, thanks to both of you for joining us. Cheers. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. That is all we have time for, but the conversation continues online. What do you think the biggest story of 2014 was, and what do you hope to see in 2015? Tell us on Twitter at CCTV underscore America, or email us. Send your email to theheat at cctv-america.com. I'm Arnold Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>